In the last video, I measured the woofer with added mass and said that it was an effective way to drive down the resonant frequency, which will allow the, the woofer to play lower. You'll get more bass extension out of the woofer by doing that. But I also said there were some pretty important conditions that you have to follow or you need to be aware of before you do that. And, and among those, the, the most important is excursion or stroke, how far the woofer cone moves in and out without causing too much distortion. Because there are a lot of fairly cheap woofers around that'll do a lot of movement, but they'll also be putting out a lot of distortion when they're doing it. Stroke or excursion is one thing. I mentioned X-Max, and that's the figure you'll see in the, in the parameters for a woofer. X-Max is actually the linear uh, excursion of the woofer. That's where it stays within the magnetic gap, the voice coil stays within the magnetic gap. Whenever it moves outside of the magnetic gap, which it can, it depends upon the stroke, how far the mechanical limits are, then distortion starts to happen. However, it's not as big a deal as you may think. The, really, the biggest thing is what the, the woofer does when it's pushed beyond that number and if it makes any strange noises when it does because those are audible. You can hear those. Distortion is kind of a tricky thing. Strictly by the numbers, you really want to avoid it. <clears throat> but when you're talking about a woofer, you can actually push it on transients well beyond what it's stated, as long as it's not making any strange noises. So that's the meaning of that test that I just did. And the device that I made is this thing right here. It's just a business card actually that is taped to the woofer cone. Like I cut it in this triangular shape and it's two inches across the bottom and an inch up this side right here. And I marked off a scale on the bottom. And what that translates to, as this thing moves up and down, you'll see that line, the different, like you'll see two lines. You'll see the upper line and you'll see the bottom line. And where the bottom line lines up with the scale on the bottom, that shows you how far the woofer's moving in and out, peak to peak. So over here it's zero, and in the middle it's actually 0.5, even though this is two inches wide. And over on the end, it's a full inch. So as you saw in the opening, what you do is you make this, and then you tape it to the dust cap on the speaker, and then you drive the speaker with an amplifier that's powerful enough to drive it, and either a function generator that I have here, or you can use your computer. Um, there's a lot of programs like Odyssey is one that'll output a, a, a tone at a certain frequency. I was running this at 20 hertz. That's a good one to start with because if it's quiet at that frequency, it's probably going to be quiet at the higher ones as well. And of course, when I say quiet, I don't mean silent because you're actually putting a 20 hertz uh, sine wave into the woofer so it's going to make sound you're going to hear sound and it's going to get louder as you put more power in but what you're looking for are different sounds the weird noises will be something that sounds like almost like a helicopter that's the kind of thing that you want you don't you want to avoid so if you reach that limit where you're hitting that you can say that that is the effective stroke of the woofer and you can use that to design your speakers. So why did I bother doing that with these woofers? Well, for one, these are custom made. And even though I got the parameters, I got them kind of secondhand from the guy that was selling them. He could have inflated that number. He could have gotten it mixed up with the peak to peak, even though Eminence doesn't publish the X Max figure as peak to peak, they go with peak, which is proper. He could have made a mistake there. So it's really good to confirm that you've got enough excursion that is not running into real problems before you use the woofer. Because the last thing you want to do is spend the time designing and building something as detailed and complex as this, only to find out that you can't turn it up. 
Like you can't get any usable volume out of it because you're running out of excursion on your woofer. 